Acts chapter 5, and I want to begin in verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with fallen angels. Do you see what's happening here? This is angels on people in cities. Fallen angels, demons. Vexing them. And it says, they, they which were vexed with demons, unclean spirits. And, now look at this, and they were healed. Whew. Oh, Jesus. They were healed. Every one of them was healed. Every demon was dominated. <laughs> and there's a reason why. As we see the surrounding context, we see the government of the dominion, or the, if you will, the release of the forces of power that took back that territory. So he's saying here that they, were, they which were vexed with unclean spirits, they were healed, every one. I want to back up and show you what occasioned the people to bring those multitudes. Well, let's back up to verse um, 12. It says, And the hands of the apostles, by the hands of the apostles, were many signs and wonders wrought or worked among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest, of the rest, durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And the believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter What's well, working with Peter here? That at the very least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. We're not talking about natural things. Because they laid them on both sides of the street. The sun wasn't shining in both directions. <laughs> We're not talking about a shadow. We're talking about the sphere of the covering of the anointing that was assigned to his ministry. And if they got within a certain distance of Peter, they just got healed. And there's a reason. Because demons can't stand in the presence of what's walking with you. Oh, glory to God. Do you understand what's going on here? I'm really wanting you to get a hold of this. There's more with us than there are against us. Say it right now. There's more with me. Then they are against me. And I have help. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now I'm going to tie some things together for you from the Word. I want you to see what was working here. Because it wasn't verses above this that we, what we talked about this morning in Peter's life and ministry. It wasn't verses above this that's happened. And an ice and Sapphire walked in. Now watch... In fact, let's back up and read it. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, kept back part of the price, and his wife also being privy to it, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan, see what's working here? An unclean spirit, a fallen angel. He wants to control, he wants to buy his way into the move of God. It's a mammon demon. <laughs> yeah. It's that mammon demon. Because what Peter was walking in was way more valuable than any little bit of money they brought from selling a property. Selling a property. Money can't purchase that glory. He said, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price of the land? And, of course, you know the rest of the story. 
while it, while it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own power? Why did you conceive this thing in your heart? Uh-oh. 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 The devil had put that thought in them and got down in their heart. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down. Wonder what caused him to fall down. Wonder what was working with Peter. <laughs> we're going to talk about some things, and we're not just going to presume. We're going to let the Bible speak. All right? So he says, Ananias ran these words, fell down, and gave up the ghost. Great fear came on all them and heard these things. And the young men arose. They wound him and carried him out. Well, you know, she did the same thing. Now, it says great fear came on all the church. And then by the end of it, it said they had a little separation. No man durst join them. That's right. Well, I guess not. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Insomuch that they brought forth the sick and put them in the streets. And of course, Peter's shadow. So I wonder what Peter's shadow was. Same thing that caused Ananias to fall down when he got in his presence. It brought judgment on those demons. It didn't bring judgment on Ananias. Now you got to get this. When those people vexed with unclean spirits got in Peter's presence, <laughs> spirits left. Yeah. Right. Brought judgment on the devil. Satan's judge. Yes. So we're not talking about God killing Ananias. God didn't kill Ananias. But when you get in that kind of glory, your harvest comes quick. Yeah. Ananias' harvest came instantly. Yeah. Yeah. I used to wonder... How, when you ask the devil his name, how that worked. Because early on, I didn't understand these things about what the anointing does and how it works and how spiritual things work. So, you know, you wanted to say, devil, what is your name? You know, because he's asked the name, cast him out and all of that. And uh, I'm a lying spirit, you know. <laughs> and you want to say, you lying spirit, are you telling me the truth? I mean, the devil's a liar. He's the father of lies. How's it, how do you know when you ask the devil his name if he's telling you the truth? That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me a while as a young preacher to get to the place where I understood enough about spiritual things to have all those kind of goofy questions answered. Here's what I found out. I found out that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. That in the light, nothing's hidden. So even demons, when they come into the light, are constrained to speak only truth. Now, they'll lie to you, and they'll try to fish around. But I'm talking about when that anointing comes. It exposes things for what they really are. So consequently, the Bible tells us that the anointing, this is 1 John 2, 27. It says, the anointing you received of him abideth in you, and you need no man to teach you. And it is truth and is no lie. Do you see that? The same anointing teaches of all things. And is truth and is no lie. It is truth and is no lie. It is truth and is no lie. It's impossible for God to lie. No one can be deceiving and telling a lie and say the Holy Ghost told him to lie. Because the Holy Ghost can't lie, so he can't lead you to. Actually, the, the tighter you get with the Holy Ghost... He's going to teach you to tell the truth all the time. Yeah. Holy Spirit's not a deceiving spirit. He didn't promise you something and then make you and dangle it out there and then really That's test right. you and wear you out and make you almost die and then give it to you to prove he's big spirit God. No, it's not the way that works. That's the devil that does that. Right. Trying to sift you as sweet and break you down, make you feel like it'll never come, get you discouraged. God's not the one doing that. He doesn't dangle carrots. He tells the truth. Hallelujah. So what happens is Ananias and Sapphira were lying. And they got in the presence of that thing. Well, that's what happened to Peter. Peter was in the boat first time it, first time it exposed in Peter's life because we know Peter had some compromise. 
I mean, this is one of the reasons we're examining his life is because of the interaction of all of this in the maturing of his ministry and him getting into his ministry despite his own self-preservation. He had help. And we're going to talk about that help. The supernatural help. Because Peter, that day in the boat, when he cast the net out, the Bible says he fell down at Jesus' knees. Why? Well, the boat was full of fish. Couldn't get to his feet. The boat was sinking for the fish. Fish were up to Jesus' knees. He fell down at Peter's knees. Boat full of fish. Depart from me. I'm a sinful man. Man, he got in that anointing. The stuff started coming out of him he wasn't ready to say before that. And that's exactly what happens when you get under the anointing. That's why demons scream out and leave. They can't take it. It burns them up. Do you understand what's going on here? It's very important because the spirit of the Holy Ghost is baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Fire is a purging implement. A purifying, sanctifying, separating implement. Burn stuff up. Man, you get, the, you get demons in the midst of light and truth and a pure anointing. They start squirming, man. They can't take it. They start saying all kind of goofy stuff and begging. And it's the most amazing thing. You pin a demon against a wall. And the first thing they'll do is, is act all pitiful. Hoping you're, you're playing on your, you know, oh, oh, you just don't know what they did to me. And the next thing you know, when you don't give in, they get mad. Well, I'm telling you, I don't understand why you won't help me. They just swing. They just look like a morph. It's morph because they're demons. See, they're cons, and they're trying to con you. And, and they can't con a person standing in complete truth. And they hate it because fear wants control. Operates in the shadows, wants control, wants to manipulate things its way. So these demons, are you with me now? Fallen angels. We're talking about angels now. Not studying demons, we're studying angels. Amen. Demons act this way because they're perverted. They, they, had, they were part of this other kingdom. They fell. So here we have these people vexed with fallen angels. But what was working with Peter drove those demons off of them. Well, that's the same thing that happened to Ananias and Sapphira when they came in Peter's presence. It manifested it. And... Let's read on down here. It says, Then the high priest rose up, verse 17, and they all that were with him, which was in the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation. They, they weren't happy at all about people getting healed. That's interesting. Wonder who's driving that religious bus. <laughs> And they laid, uh oh, laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. It's always, listen, when, when, when miracle signs and wonders are treated common, you can bet one thing demons are at work. That's right. yeah. Religious tradition always wants to take miracles and put them in the common prison. So the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors. <laughs> but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said oh I like it go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life that shows you why that a lot of, a lot of people don't have a lot of angelic activity in the ministry or in churches because they're afraid to really talk about what the covenant says because the biggest tither might get offended. The angel said, you, you preach all of it. Hallelujah. So he says, preach all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in prison, they returned and said, The prison truly found we shut. 
with all safety, the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. And the high priest uh, and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things. They doubted of them whereunto this would grow. And one of them said, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple teaching the people. <laughs> Ooh, angels working with me. So what do you think it was standing there with Peter when Ananias inspired? He just fell down. Boom. Well, let's talk about it. Go with me further over in the book of Acts. And let's go uh, to Acts chapter 12. Now about that time, verse 1, Herod the king, who? Herod. Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex. Uh-oh. We know now who's driving Herod. So about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also, for these were the days of unleavened bread. Well, you know what he was thinking. Oh, man, it pleased them so well. You know, and they pay lots of taxes. Um, this, is, this is a big deal. It pleased them so well. Peter, I mean, he's the big, he's the big fish. I mean, we killed James. Now, Peter's the big fish, and I know what I'm going to do. On their holiest day, I'm going to kill him on Easter. No, it didn't turn out very well for Herod. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so, when he had apprehended him, now, it's really important that you look at this phrasing. They lay hold on the apostles. Here it says, he apprehended him. Now, let's flip that around and let's talk about Paul saying, forget those things which are behind. But I press toward the mark that I might apprehend that for which I've been apprehended of. There's some things that already have a hold of me. A lot stronger than you can get a hold of me. And we're going to talk about not only about what takes hold with you and how this works and how the angelic realm works with faith and confession to get that world to come brought to you. No matter what anybody says. If Pharaoh can't hold you. Can't, they couldn't hold Moses and, and Israel. You see this? Hell couldn't hold Jesus. It says in Acts 2, it was impossible for hell to hold him, for him to be held by the pangs of death. It's impossible for you to be held. There's something that's taken hold with you that's much stronger than, that's, than that which is trying to take hold of you. And that's what deliverance does. Deliverance just grabs you and breaks the grip of what's got a hold of you and jerks you out of it. Breaks the hold. Deliverance means you're held, you're bound by something, but if something stronger, a stronger one comes. Whack! Breaks the hold. You go free. You're no longer contained. You're no longer stopped. You have help. Yeah. Say it out loud. Angels working with me. Angels working with me. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Well, I hear this in my spirit right now. Angels going to get my stuff. Angels going to get my stuff. <laughs> They're apprehending my stuff. They've gone to my future to bring into my hands. Yeah, what I need to do what the will of the Lord is in my life, to carry out the ministry of Jesus. They're bringing it to me right now. Everything I need out of heaven and earth is being brought to me. Right now, I have help. Angels are working with me. Woo, glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God. My, my, my. So, you see what happened here. And so, they apprehended him, put him in prison, delivered him to four quaternion of soldiers, that's 16 soldiers, to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made for him without ceasing in the church of God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between, I love that, <laughs> sleeping between two soldiers. Now, I don't know about you on the eve before your execution, but many saints wouldn't be sleeping. But see, Jesus had already prophesied to him. 
said, when you're young, you girded yourself and went where you wanted to go. But when you're old, another will gird you, take you where you don't want to go. And so he figured, I'm not old yet, can't die in the morning. <laughs> Standing on the promises, well, he was sleeping on the promises. <laughs> not in the premises, on the promises. Right between two soldiers. Praise the Lord. Sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers. See, let me explain to you. People that are driven by demons, the keepers, teach people how to keep. They teach people to keep and hold it. That's why the mammon demon says you will hold the one and despise the other. That's why Satan hates being giving. Everything he has, he wants to hold on to it. He's greedy. And he wants to and he teaches people to hold on to it. So you'll have those 1952 front end ball joints for that Chevy that granddaddy gave you because you think it's valuable stuffed in the back of where you can't find it. By sentimental value, you think it's valuable, he'll teach you to keep it. Thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> Some of the greatest thing you can ever do is declutter your life. Yeah. Glory be to God. Because you don't realize it, but everything has a voice. The Bible says so. The Bible says in the judgment that their gold and silver will witness against them. That's a long way to that church. I mean, that sure is a lot of gas. And after all, I mean, you know, I'm putting all those miles. I'm taking tread off the tire of my car. <laughs> what they don't know is the tires on their car is more important than sitting under the anointing. Yeah. And at judgment, their tires are going to witness against them. Because wow. all these things perish with the using. But a demon convinced them it's more valuable than coming to church. Come on. All right, thank you for your help here. Let's... Uh, I'm talking about angels. Yes, sir. I'm talking about the unsearchable riches of Christ. <coughs> Hallelujah. And behold, the angel of the Lord. The who? The angel of the Lord. Oh, my, my. The angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Gird thyself and bind on your sandals. So he did. And he said to him, Gast your garment about you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He didn't know that it was true, which was done by the angel. Thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and second ward, they came to the iron gate that leads into the city. Yeah. Glory be to God, yeah. which opened to them. Of yeah. its own accord. Who's opening that gate? Angels. For Peter. A sign to Peter. That he might get accomplished. What they had laid hold on him and tried to keep him from accomplishing. Angels working with me. Say it out. Angels working with me. Glory be to God. Do you see what's happening here, Brother J.D.? He's working with the anointing. Because money, he couldn't have bribed his way out of that jail. No amount of money would have gotten him out of that jail. Herod didn't need his money. Now, don't forget where we were in Ananias and Sapphira. Remember, the shadow was working with him. All that was going on with Peter, what was that? Well, we know what it was. We're, we're seeing now the Bible's beginning to be very clear of what was walking with him, what was working with him, what was helping him. Amen? Amen. Amen? Notice what it says here. Let's just read on. It says, when Peter was come to himself, <clears throat> actually in verse 10, and when they were first and second ward, they came into the iron gate that led to the city and opened to them of his own accord. They went out and passed through the street. Forthwith the angel departed from him. Well, it didn't mean he left him. It meant he didn't see the angel anymore. Right. Once the angel had done his job, right. yeah. it didn't mean he left him. I'm going to prove it to you in just a minute. It didn't, he didn't leave him, but he didn't see him anymore. Right. Now he kind of came to himself and realized, hey, I'm out on the street. This really did happen. It's not a vision. Right. Yeah. Right. So he's seeing in this realm now. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And so 
it says, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me. We see clearly with Herod, he wasn't about to be delivered. He wanted this position. He wanted this pleasure. He wanted this riches. And his whole lifetime, if he was cut loose to let him have his way, he'd have taken everything and killed every Christian. And God said, uh-uh, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Why? Because I'm not dealing with Herod now. I'm dealing with a territorial demon. And if he won't get rid of that demon, he's going to have the demon's fate. Do you see what's happening here? That's why it's so important to make some choices. Because these angels are at work. Glory be to God. Amen. These angels are at work. And so as we look at this, it says, Immediately the angel Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. And the word of God grew and multiplied and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem and when they had fulfilled their ministry. You see the phrase here? You see what's going on here? That angel was getting out of the way, the thing that was stopping them from getting in the territory and fulfilling their ministry. And they took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Glory be to God. Now, here's the thing. That angel, here clearly says it was the angel. We see the angel working with Peter the whole time. Now we know also that this angel had an agenda here, not only to cut Peter loose to get his ministry done, but Barnabas and Saul, right? And we see what's going on, but Herod fell down dead. It doesn't say so, but I'd be surprised if anybody in the crowd saw that angel that day. Maybe. It doesn't say anything about an angel being the one standing there with Peter and Ananias and Sapphira, but it's the same manifestation. You see what I'm trying to say to you here? Yeah. They're working with us. Thank you for watching Experience Him. If this message has ministered to you and you would like more information or to contact Harvest International Ministries, write to us at the address on the screen. Or please visit us online at tracyharris.tv.